Greetings, friends and brethren. Paul May's with you. I'm a Christian. Woo! How's it going? I'm glad to see you. Sun's shining on a cool winter day, early winter afternoon here. I'm in Virginia. I'm in the uh, southwest part of Virginia. Roanoke Valley is where I live. I'm just passing my field over here to the left. I've got a creek and a field down here. Very blessed to live where I live. Lately, I've been working for Jesus. Have you? I'm always working for Jesus. I love working for Jesus. I have a very blessed existence serving the master in the ways that I get to serve. It's my blessing, my privilege to get to serve in some very unique ways. I, uh, I'm a hymn writer. I write hymns and uh, other Christians send me their hymns. Sometimes we work together. Lately uh, I worked with um, May Zaportiza and uh, let's see, Deb Hibbard. And both those Christians, at least one of them, I think both of them live in the Philippines and they sent me a Christian hymn or, or May did and she had written a, a hymn she had written the melodies Deb had written the lyrics it was a poem and May turned it into a hymn and she sent it to me and I worked with it I wrote a couple more verses and I wrote a bridge for it which is unusual usually I do verse chorus verse chorus verse chorus in that format sometimes I start with the chorus and end with the chorus and sometimes I go verse chorus verse chorus verse chorus but this time it was Verse, 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 bridge, verse, verse. And it is, uh, use me, Father, this I pray. It's a really good song. I love the song. It was a very, uh, it was a very rewarding experience. The whole thing was rewarding. So, anyway, it's out there. I posted it. It's on YouTube and Facebook. I pray it's a blessing to you. That is not the subject of today's message. Today's message, whoop, is about the non-denominational denomination. And yes, that sounds like a, an oxymoron because it is. So if a group is non-denominational, then they're theoretically not a denomination. I made a text post about that today. Um, I had made another post about, uh, it's, it was a meme, I make memes. I take photographs and make memes, put words on them, and they're Christian memes. And uh, the meme I had made was saying that the Christians aren't asking you to change denominations. Instead, we're asking you to obey the gospel of Christ and being and be added by Jesus himself to his one church, which is not a denomination. His church is not a denomination. You know, I give lots of evidence. I give lots of evidence on this. But the fact will always remain that in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, that's a promise, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and that's a promise. This is both singular and possessive. When Jesus built that church, like he said he was going to, there weren't any denominations. So, it's literally pre-denominational. Pre, pre meaning before, denomination meaning division. Jesus' church is literally pre-denominational. It was here before any denomination existed. And I'd like you to, throughout this study, I'd like you to keep in mind the fact that he promised it would always be here. It would always stand. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means it is here because Jesus said so. And it's literally pre-denominational, just by definitions of terms. And it's literally still here. So that's the one I want to be part of. I don't want to be a part of religious division. Now, let's just state here that the, the non-denominational folks have the most beautiful, noble intention behind uh, their position. Their position is that they are not a denomination. Well, the reason we would have that position is because Jesus is against denominations. We would turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 13 to show this. Uh, the first verse in that passage says, Now I beseech, urge, now I urge you Christians, 
now I beseech you, brethren, in the name of, that's by the authority of, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, no denominations, but that you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. The passage goes on to talk about the religious division, saying, some of you are saying, I'm this kind of Christian. I'm of Paul. I'm of Silas. I'm of Apollos. It's, and I'm of Christ. And then it says, is Christ divided? No, Christ is not divided, y'all. He's not. And his church should not be divided either. And as promised, his church is still here. Now, Paul goes on to say in that passage that he was glad he only baptized some people because some of y'all are saying, I'm a Paul. They were saying they were Paul kind of Christians. There's no such thing as a kind of Christian. There's no hyphenated Christians in the Bible. You can't be a hyphenated Christian like a, a, a Catholic Christian or a Protestant Christian or a Calvinist Christian or a Baptist Christian. One is either a Christian or they're not. So Paul says, I'm glad I didn't baptize more of you guys because you guys are saying you're Paul kind of Christians. And that's condemned there. Christ is not divided into kinds of Christians or kinds of churches. He has his church and everything else is just some kind of religious institution that is not his church and it's not of the faith. Now, what we need to do is look to the authority of the scripture to see what his church looked like. We do that and then we're that church. Because remember, Jesus said, it's still here. I'm just going to keep harping on that. Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. His church is here. It's here. Guarantee it. So how do we do that? Well, we abide in the doctrine of Christ. And let me tell you, friend, that's the whole shooting match right there, man. That's the whole thing. It's abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Abiding in, sticking with, staying with, teaching. So reading, studying, believing, obeying, preaching, practicing the doctrine of Christ is how we are the church. Now that would be 2 John 1, 9. The verse reads as, He that abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. If we don't stick with the doctrine of Christ, we don't have God. We're not Christians. If we stick, stick with Calvinist doctrine, we are Calvinists. That's not being sticking with, that's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. It's different from the doctrine of Christ. If you stick with the catechism, you are not sticking with, abiding in, the doctrine of Christ. The rest of the verse says, He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, I want to be a Christian. I want to abide in, stick with, believe, obey, and teach the doctrine of Christ. Well, where do we find that? Do we find it in the Catechism or in the Hiscox Baptist Manual? The writings of Luther, perhaps. You know, I had a dream last night. I was uh, rebuking, uh, I think it was Calvinist error in my dream, and somebody in my dream said, oh, well, we need to consult the writings of Luther. If you, if you think that's wrong, what Calvin said, you need to turn to the writings of Luther. And I'm like, no, friend. We need to turn to, and I'll say the same thing in my dream to you that I said in my dream, and that is, all Scripture is breathed out by God. Breathe. Comes from God. It's given by inspiration of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable. We're in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly equipped thoroughly furnished. We have what we need with the Bible. That's how you get the doctrine of Christ. That's it, y'all. You turn to the Bible. You don't turn to man-made manuals to get the doctrine of Christ. It's not found there. So again, the non-denominational groups have a very beautiful intent they don't want to be divided. That, in fact, is abiding in the doctrine of Christ because the doctrine of Christ says don't be divided. Now, we covered 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13 that rebukes religious division, but the rest of that that we need, the rest of the evidence we need on that topic is John 17, 20 through 23. This is the Lord's Prayer. It's not the model prayer. Not by kingdom come, thy will be done model prayer. 
We're talking about the Lord actually praying, so it's the Lord's Prayer. Well, what do you think he prayed for? Unity. Isn't that beautiful? The Lord prayed for religious unity, that we would be all united in the doctrine of Christ, that we would all be one. Now, John 17 through 23, John 17, 20 through 23 is the Lord praying for unity. Now, I had a very sad experience witnessing firsthand what happens when we are not united in the doctrine of Christ. Now, let's consider some of the words. I can't quote the whole prayer, but some of the highlights from it. Uh, I'll, I'll try some of it. Neither pray I for these alone, for the ones also. Yeah, I'm not doing it right. I'll tell you what, I'll just overdub it after the fact. I'll overdub it right here. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. All right, so what we see from that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, is that if we are united in His doctrine, if we teach the same thing, if we obey the command to teach the same thing, 1 Corinthians 1.10, the result of that is that the world will know that God loves them, and the world will know that God sent Jesus. I had a very sad personal experience. I witnessed firsthand the result of religious division. And it's the opposite of what Jesus prayed for here. If we had been united, then this person who I studied with would have believed what God said about Jesus. And I told this person, I said, you know, I have to tell you that Jesus really is God's only begotten Son. He's the one Son of God. And the person said back to me, Oh, well, that's your beliefs. This person had been exposed to Calvinism their whole life. They saw the waffling opinions of men that change constantly and change between groups. And the result of that is that she didn't even believe in Jesus. She literally denied Christ right then and there. It was devastating to me personally. This is one who I love. Folks, that's the result of a religious division. So the non-denominational groups, they recognize that religious division is against Christ. Wonderful. We love that you recognize that. All right, so let's, let's look at this for what it really is, what's really going on here. Now, if you teach that religious division is not something we should be part of, but we should not be a denomination. And that's what saying you're non-denominational means. That is great. We're so glad that you recognize that. Now, let's see this to its logical conclusion. Let's see this on out. Let's, let's go with that theme and see it to its end because we agree on that. The way to be the one church of the Bible that is not a denomination, non-denominational if you choose, pre-denominational, if we go by literal definitions of terms, is abiding in the doctrine of Christ again. Remember? 2 John 1, 9. So if you say that you're not a denomination, but then you maintain the doctrines that you've always taught that are sourced from man-made manuals and creed books, then you're still a denomination, and that would be the non-denominational denomination. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron because it is. If, if you were indeed non-denominational, then you wouldn't be a denomination. But because the non-denominational groups still teach Calvinism and Luther, and they use the Hiscox manual, and they have their own manuals, then they are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. They are instead abiding in man-made doctrines, and that's why they are a denomination rather than the one church that belongs to Christ, the one that we can all read about in the Bible. Here are some ways that you can know that your non-denominational church is in actuality a denomination. Number one, 
they teach once saved, always saved. That's just one example. I, I, these are not in any particular order. Just something I know of. Uh, we've got examples in the scriptures of um, Simon believing and was baptized in Acts chapter 8. And then he tried to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they were like, you need to repent. You need to pray and repent so that you can be forgiven because your heart's not right inside of God. You're in the gall of bitterness, bitterness and the bond of iniquity. That is someone who was saved and then lost. I have a wall. I could do a whole lesson. I have done whole lessons on why once saved, always saved is not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. It's man-made. Okay? It's made up. And it's from Calvin. It's called Perseverance of the Saints according to Calvin. We have examples in Scripture of people who lost, who be, people who fell from grace, left their first love, fell from grace, left their first love, cast off the faith. That's the other one I was looking for. We have examples of people who were saved and then they were lost. So once saved, always saved is a fable, a 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4 fable. Man makes it up. It's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. If your group teaches once saved, always saved, and they say they're not a denomination, they're a denomination. Just one example. Now, if they also, another way is if they teach the fictional sinner's prayer that man made up, they're not the church that Jesus built. They are a denomination. If they teach the sinner's prayer, invite Jesus into your heart, just accept Jesus as your personal Savior, faith alone, any of that mess, that's made up by man. It doesn't work. That's why it's a spiritual dead end. And that's why it's a 2 Timothy 4.4 fable. It is. If your group teaches that, that they are a denomination rather than the church that belongs to Christ. Another way. If a group, and I don't think the non-denominational denomination does this, but if a group has a, a hierarchy that is different from the divine pattern, meaning um, scripturally qualified elders, a plurality, more than one, a plurality of scripturally qualified elders over an autonomous congregation, the congregation isn't governed by anybody above that, then, uh, my buddy, then they are just a denomination rather than the church that belongs to Christ. Um, the Catholics were the first to divide from the divine pattern regarding congregational autonomy. Instead of having a plurality of biblically qualified men over a congregation, they said, no, we're going to have one guy over a congregation and then another guy over a bunch of congregations. And that is not of Christ. That's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Now, if a group also has, there's many ways you could divide from Christ on that and cease to be his church and instead be just a denomination like uh, groups that have female elders. They are not of Christ. Uh, elders have to be, by divine decree, the husband of one wife. Females cannot be husbands. This is not discriminating against females. This is instead submitting to God's authority for his church. God does not discriminate against males and females. He just has different jobs for us. In fact, it says that there's no neither male nor female, but you're all one in Christ Jesus from Galatians 3. Another way that they could be divided from the church and cease to be the church that Jesus built, that would be offering vain worship. Worship that is not by the authority of Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 16 and 17 says, and 17's potent here, 16 says, sing, teach, admonish, sing. Then 17 says, whatever you do must be by the authority of Jesus Christ. So if your group doesn't do that, if they instead bang on instruments, play guitars, and I'm a musician, I play a bunch of instruments, I just don't offer it as worship. If your group instead bangs on instruments, pianos, and drums, and any any man-made instrument, any instrument, then that's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Listen, 17, 317, as I said, whatever you do must be by the authority of Jesus Christ. There's no authority for Christians to use instruments for worship to, the, to God Almighty. In the Christian, Christian dispensation, in this Christian age, while we are under the new covenant, a better 
covenant built on better promises. Hebrews 8, 6, and 7. There's no authority for instruments. If your group is offering instruments and they call themselves non-denominational, they are the non-denominational denomination. They're just a denomination. That's a few ways that the church, a group rather, because the church is the church. There's only one. Ephesians 5.25 if your group is worshiping with instruments, if they teach a different way of salvation, if they teach you can't lose your salvation, then they're just a denomination and we love you. That's why I'm doing this. Friend, I am not fighting against you. No, no friend, I'm not fighting against you. I'm fighting against Satan on your behalf. He wants you to believe that the things that they teach you in that group are truth. That's what he wants you to believe. He doesn't want you to believe that there's one way of salvation. He that believes and is baptized will be saved is what Jesus said. You know, I think we'll wrap it up here with this. If your group does not teach this, what I'm about to, re to repeat for you, it is not the church that Jesus purchased with his own blood, but it is instead a denomination no matter what they describe themselves as. It doesn't matter what they say about themselves. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to repeat the first gospel sermon. Now, if I repeat the first gospel sermon, that means it's truth. And if your group that you worship with doesn't teach this, then it's not Jesus' church. It's just a denomination. It doesn't matter if they say, we are the body of Christ, or we are the church of Christ, or we are non-denominational, or we are the one blood-bought church that you can read about in the Bible. If they don't teach the same thing that the apostles taught, they are not the church that belongs to Christ. Acts chapter 2, the first gospel sermon. Peter delivered this by divine inspiration, by the authority of Jesus Christ he did, and I'm repeating it by the authority of Jesus Christ. I don't have any authority. Now he told the people, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved in verse 21 of Acts 2. He went on to tell those folks that they had killed Jesus. Now you and I killed Jesus too. He had to be sacrificed because we have sinned and there's no other suitable sacrifice for our sins other than the blood of Jesus Christ. None. Y'all killed Jesus. That's you and me and those people there. What do we do about that, said the people. Maybe you've asked that question. I know I had to ask that question. What do I do about this? I'm guilty of, of putting Jesus on the cross because I've sinned. What do we do about this, they said. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. What must we do, they said. Peter told them how to call on the name of the Lord, how to appeal to his authority, and he stated that it was by the authority of Jesus that he was making this offer. Then Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he said it. That's by whose authority he said it. And that's by whose authority I repeat it. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now this offer is good for you and everyone who follows Acts 2.39. So save yourselves. Contrary to Calvinism, save yourselves. Acts 2.40. It is by the authority of Jesus Christ I say save yourselves. Does that mean we earn salvation? Not even close. Save yourselves. Do whatever they did to get the remission of sins and to be added. That's what happened in the very next verse in Acts 2.41. Save yourselves, Acts 2.40. Then they that gladly received his words were baptized, and that day added unto them about 3,000 souls. Yes. Yes, friend. That offer for salvation is good for you and everyone who follows Acts 2.39. So save yourselves, Acts 2.40. Acts 2.41, gladly receive the word just like they did. Go down into the water to be immersed in water because Jesus said so. That's what I mean by the authority of Jesus Christ. In the name of. I say this because Jesus made that offer through Peter on that day, and I repeat it to you. Friend, if you are part of a denomination, 
who teaches that you don't have to do that. It's just a denomination rather than Jesus' church. Denominations are not Jesus' church. If you're part of a non-denominational group that doesn't teach this, then they're a denomination. They're the non-denominational denomination, and I love you, and I want you to go to heaven. This is why I'm fighting against Satan on your behalf, and this is the urgency that you hear in my voice. I want you to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven, and I want you to. I want you to go to heaven. I love you. My name is Paul Mays. I'm a Christian. Let's finish that out. Acts 2, 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The ones who did what Peter said they must do by the authority of Jesus Christ to get the remission of sins. Yeah, they did it. And they were added by Jesus himself. There is no other way into his one blood-bought church, his holy bride, Revelation 21-2. His one body, His church. If you want to get into it, you're going to have to do what all of the believers did in the book of Acts. Save yourself, friend. Just do what they did. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, He will wash you of your sins with His own blood. Colossians 2, 10 through 12. And Jesus Himself will add you. I love you. I want you to go to heaven. If you're part of the non-denominational group that doesn't teach this, you are part of a denomination. If you're part of a denomination that has no problem being called a denomination, it's not Jesus' church. I love you and I want you to go to heaven. I answer biblical, I answer spiritual questions with the biblical authority. If you have questions, drop them here in the comments. I also study with people in private almost every day. All right, every day I study with people in private. I love you and I want you to go to heaven. If you think this is good stuff, Christian, if you're fired up by my fired up message because I'm fired up for Jesus, go ahead and propagate it. Share it. Get other people into Christ. Galatians 3.27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. That's how you get there. Get added to the church, Acts 2.47. I love you. If you think this is good stuff, go ahead and share it. I'll see you next time.